As you grow as an artist, one of the major milestones along the way is being able to identify problems in your painting. Can you figure out what's wrong with your painting when it doesn't work? So today we're gonna to talk about the top three problems in watercolor painting and how we can fix them. Learning how to identify problems in your painting is so important to recognize those problems, to work on those issues, and keep moving forward and growing as an artist. So problem number one is perspective and drawing. The drawing in watercolor is very important. Joseph Spukovic calls it the bones of your painting. If your painting doesn't have good bones, it's just not gonna work. And one of the common misconceptions is, if I wanna be a good drawer, it's gonna take years and years to develop this skill and it can feel very overwhelming. But the reality is in watercolor painting, the drawing is not your finished piece of art. We, our drawings don't need to be super complex, detailed renderings of the scene. We simply need a roadmap to guide us along the way to help our painting be successful. So you don't need to spend years becoming an expert draftsman in order to create accurate, beautiful, wonderful watercolor paintings. We just need to know enough about drawing in order to create our composition, to arrange the major parts of our painting in a good way, and to ensure that our painting has accurate perspective. Perspective can sound a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of resources out there that can help you learn how to draw in perspective. There's so many books. Don't avoid learning these things because it can feel overwhelming. You know, I got a simple book a long time ago, Perspective Made Easy. It's like a $10 book, really old, probably, I think it's from the 1930s. This little bit, learning how to draw in perspective, enough to lay out your composition in a good way, enough to arrange your scene, the different elements of your scene in a good way, and to ensure that your scene has correct perspective is very valuable when it comes to painting watercolor. Problem number two, overworking your painting. And this is a common one. You know, this is so common that that's why I've created my free video lesson specifically about overworking your painting. And I know a lot of you have seen it, some of you haven't, and if you haven't, you can follow the link below and get to my, my free video lesson on how to avoid overworking your painting. This is a very common thing. And I think it might be more of a struggle in watercolor than in any other medium, because watercolor needs to be fresh. It needs to be clean in how it's painted and confident and how it's painted. So overworking your painting stems from a variety of issues. The first one is not having a plan for your painting. So if you see a scene you like and you jump in and you just start to paint, you're not likely to be super successful unless you've had years of experience and that's how you like to paint. So taking the time to assess your scene, come up with a game plan can really help you avoid overworking your painting. And you can ask yourself a few questions, like what details in this scene are important? What details can I eliminate? That's where simplification comes into play. And simplifying our scene is really important in watercolor. And for a lot of reasons, it helps make our painting more clear. It tells the viewer what it is about the scene that was important to me. It makes the scene less confusing if you can eliminate unneeded detail. So these are the types of things that you need to think about beforehand, before you start to paint, before you draw your scene, have a game plan and go through some of these things. That will help you to avoid overworking your painting. Another common thing that I see is students using too small of a brush. If you're painting a shape or an area in 20 brush strokes, when it could be done in four brush strokes with the right size brush, that leads to the painting being overworked. So not painting lazy, using the right tool, switch your brushes when you need to, and selecting the right size brush for the thing that you're trying to paint. And finally, the biggest problem I see in students painting is values. Are your values correct? If they're not correct, the painting is most likely not gonna work. It's not gonna look believable. You're not gonna be able to create a good sense of atmosphere or a good 
sense of light in your scene if your values are incorrect. And values are simply how light or how dark something is and how they relate to each other. So values are the most powerful thing that we could work on to make our paintings better. In fact, that's the main module in my online course that some of you have taken, Watercolor Essentials, because values are the greatest tool that we have to paint an effective, powerful scene. If one of my paintings doesn't work, that's the first thing I think. Are the values right? Are they accurate? And 90% of the time, if my painting is off or a student's painting is off, it is all about values. So like everything I've mentioned so far, having a plan beforehand is so important in painting good values. And that's why we do things like value studies. Learning to simplify all the different value ranges into three groups. We're leaving the paper white for our zero through three values, our four through seven values we're painting as a middle value shape, and then our eight through 10 values you're painting as darks. And doing a simple value study, learning how to do value studies and how to create them and how to apply them to your scenes and simplifying things to make your scene paintable into these value groups is key in planning and painting the correct values for your scene. So if you spent time working on anything, I would suggest spend your time working on values, seeing values more clearly, creating value studies, and making your paintings more accurate as far as values are concerned. And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, How to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've got some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. And that is overworking my painting. I talk through eight different tips to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below, take a look at it, and I hope it can help you out as well. So those are my top three problems that I see in watercolor paintings. So I would love to hear from you in the comments below which one of these three issues, drawing in perspective, overworking your painting, and values, which one of these three do you feel like you struggle with the most? Thank you for spending some time with me today. Keep working at it, keep moving forward in your painting, and I'll see you next time.